Hi, welcome to this Greenbelt at Home virtual program all about owls. My name is Angel Ellers and I'm an environmental educator here in the Greenbelt with New York City Parks. And today myself and my co-educator Christopher Ricker will be teaching you all about owls. You'll learn about how cool owls are, how awesome some of their really interesting adaptations are, and how unique their digestive systems are, and about something really mysterious called an owl pellet. But first, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Like, have you ever seen an owl? I've actually seen five owls in the wild in my life. I've seen a few in a zoo, but I saw two all by myself spotted in the forest by walking nice and slow, quiet, and really observing nature around me. It was really spectacular. My second question is, what do you think of when you think of owls? When I think of owls, I think about big-eyed hunters at night in the forest. My third question is, do you think that there are a lot of owls in New York City? I can see why maybe you wouldn't think that there are, but the truth is that you can see quite a few different species of owls in New York, even right here on Staten Island and even in the Greenbelt. Owls are mostly solitary and nocturnal hunters. That means when they're hunting, they're generally doing it alone and at night. And when they're hunting, what they're looking for is a great range of things, from insects to small rodents, to frogs, and snakes, hares, and even depending on the owl, fish. There are over 200 species of owls throughout the whole world. You can find them in a diverse range of ecosystems. But generally the owls you find here on Staten Island are found in this kind of ecosystem that you see all around me at the Greenbelt called a forested woodland. Some of the owls that come through Staten Island are just coming for a little visit and on their way to another location. And those are called migratory owls. However, there are just a few species who do make their home here year round. Here are just a few facts about some of the beautiful owls that you might see right here in the Greenbelt. Short-eared owls are sometimes found in groups in winter and they nest on the ground. Long-eared owls are rare to see here or to nest, but when they do, it's in an old crow's nest. Northern saw-wet owls are the smallest and cutest of all the owls, roosting in conifers and sometimes in old woodpecker holes. Snowy owls are rare in winter, but they tend to hang out in low-lying areas, like on fences, sand dunes, and shorelines, often in Rockaway Beach and even in Central Park this winter. Barn owls are extremely rare sites, usually nesting in barns and old abandoned structures. And finally, the barred owl. They sleep high up in pine trees, avoiding nesting near their more aggressive cousins, the great horned owl. Meanwhile, Staten Island is home to two common nesting owl species. That means they aren't just traveling through, but they make their home and raise their young here as well. These species are the Eastern Screech Owl, which is our most common nesting owl that calls Staten Island home. They can be found in many parks and woodlands greater than two acres. Their calls are soft trills and whinnies. They are slightly larger than robins and come in either gray or red colorations, also known as morphs. Great horned owls are the largest native owl we have here on Staten Island, which is brownish with yellow eyes and its iconic ear tufts that look like horns. They like various wooded habitats, even in suburban areas, and that's where we are. They eat mammals, birds, frogs, and snakes. They nest in the old stick nests of other birds, snags, and tree hollows, and they make that recognizable Call. Now, let's fly on over to Chris Ricker to learn a little bit more about what is so special about the owl's anatomy. Thanks, Angel. That introduction to owls was quite a hoot, and it was really exciting to learn about all the different species of owls that can be found right here in New York City. Now that we know a little bit about owls, in this portion of the video, we're gonna cover some of the adaptations that allow owls to thrive in their living environment. During this portion of the video, we're gonna cover owl feathers, owl beaks, their eyes, owl ears, and of course, their talons. Let's take flight. 
So before we jump into what owl adaptations are, let's talk a little bit about adaptations. When an animal has an adaptation, it means that either over a really long period of time, they evolved certain traits or learned certain behaviors in order to maximize and thrive within a living environment. Owls in particular are nocturnal creatures, meaning that they live and are active at night. So if you're an owl active at night, looking for prey, looking for shelter, maybe looking for a mate, you're gonna have adaptations that allow you to thrive in the nighttime environment. In particular, something that makes them a little bit different than other birds are their feathers. So here I have a large pelican feather. Pelicans are birds that live near the ocean. They're pretty big and they're diurnal, meaning that they're living during the day and active during the day. If you listen to this feather, you can hear that that feather makes a lot of noise. Now, if you were something like an owl that was relying on stealth during the nocturnal hours, you would want something a little bit more quiet. And it's because owl feathers are known as flight fringe feathers. So they're designed specifically not to make noise while they're moving through their nocturnal environment looking for prey or looking for a place to perch. Another adaptation that allows owls to thrive in a nocturnal environment is their eyes. Here, I have a replica great horned owl skull. And if you notice looking at this skull, the most large portion of its face are its eyes. Having those really big eyes and specific rods and cones allow them to pull a lot of light into their eyes, which makes seeing in the dark a lot easier compared to something like a human's eyes. Even though you can't see it on this skull, owls do have ears. Their ears are asymmetrical, meaning that they're not on the same side of their head, whether on their left or their right, which allows them to have a more complex sense of hearing so that as they're listening from their perch at night, they can hear rodents scurrying in the leaf litter. They can hear another owl hooting in the distance, or they can hear something like a human taking a night hike looking for frogs. Something else we see on this skull is their beak. Owl beaks, like other raptors or birds of prey, have really sharp, strong beaks, which are made for pulling things apart. Now, while owls do gobble up their food relatively whole, they do have strong beaks, just like their cousins, the hawks, the eagles, and the falcons. The last adaptation we're gonna talk about today are owls' feet. Now, all birds have feet. Some birds like ducks have webbed feet. Some birds like songbirds have perching feet, but owls are birds of prey, and so they have something known as talons. And talons are really sharp, long claws which besides gripping a branch would be really great for what? That's right, catching prey. So if you were an owl swooping down silently in the middle of the night on an unsuspecting rodent, you would want some sort of tools that can easily grab and hold onto that mouse so it doesn't get away. And so talons are really strong adaptations that owls have, just like all of their other adaptations, to make them successful keystone species living in their nocturnal environments. Another really important and very interesting adaptation of owls that we're going to focus on here today is their digestive system. And owls actually eat most of their prey whole, which means that whole bit of an animal is going in and it needs extra help to digest. So owls actually have two stomachs to help in that process. The first stomach is called a glandular stomach. And this is where all of the easier digestible things are liquefied. So we're talking about flesh and different softer muscle tissues. Whatever has not been digested then moves to the second stomach and that is called the muscular stomach. In this stomach, that's where parts that are harder but still digestible get kind of ground together and broken down and moved on. Whatever has not been liquefied or digested in the first or second stomachs then is compacted together, all of the moisture taken out and turned into what we're talking about, an owl pellet. 
an owl pellet then would be regurgitated back up and out through the mouth. So although you may have always thought that an owl pellet was poop, it's not. It's actually puke. The really cool thing, however, is that owls aren't the only birds with two stomachs and they aren't the only birds who produce pellets. Actually, all birds have two stomachs and many larger species of birds also make pellets. We're talking about hawks, eagles, kites, falcons, cormorants, robins, and the list goes on. Pellets usually measure about one to two inches in length. And there is so much that can be learned from dissecting the pellet, like we're gonna show you in part two. You can learn about the different diet of owls in different environments and ecosystems, all without having to harm the bird or dissect it itself. Thank you for joining us for part one of All About Owls. Now that we have an understanding of the natural history, biology, and adaptation of owls, join us for part two of this video where we will dissect an owl pellet itself, explore how to identify the bones within, and learn even more about an owl's digestive system.